so what was the question again? Oh, wait, why is it called the traffic jam? Well, you know, the reason is it's because I have two really cool cars. Seriously cool cars. And I love drifting, racing, <clears throat> because I am fast and slick. And plus, I like to create a bit of traffic jam myself with a whole lot of great music. Burumanaka, my name is Real, your host and DJ, right here on the Today FM Traffic Jam, every weekday from 3 p.m. to 7. Right here on Today FM, today's hit music. <laughs> The FPC 2014 election special. You are number one with us. Good evening, Fiji. I'm Jackie Spade. Welcome to our special bulletin of the 2014 general election. Our coverage begins with our reporter Christopher Chand, who is at the Tailing Centre in Suva. Chris, what is the latest information that you have from the centre? Yes, Jackie, the last provisional results were released this afternoon. We'll give you a quick update of the provisional results that we've got on hand here at the National Tele Center. The Fiji First Party with a commanding lead of 239,261 votes. Now that's 60% of the total votes that have been tallied so far. These are the provisional results that have come to hand. Sodelpa is in second place with 106,406 votes. That's 26.7%. The National Federation Party is in third place, 22,446 votes, 5.6 percent. The People's Democratic Party in fourth place on 14,027 votes, 3.5 percent. The Fiji Labour Party on 9,530 votes, 2.4 percent. One Fiji Party on nine, rather on 4,511 votes, which is 1.1 percent. The Fiji United Freedom Party on 686 votes, which is 0.2 percent. Independent candidate Roshika Deo on 851 votes, 0.2 percent. Independent candidate Umens Chand is on 173 votes. Now a total of 397,891 votes have been tallied. These are from the provisional results. Just looking at the candidates, individual candidates, Fiji First Party leader Choseya Vorengem Bainimarama with a commanding lead at the top of the ladder, 167,224 votes. He's in first place, followed by Sodel leader Rote Momokepa, who's on 37,144 votes. Now in third place is the Fiji First General Secretary Aya Sayed Kayum. He's on 12,362 votes. And following him on fourth place is the National Federation Party leader Biman Prasad on 6,931 votes. Now what will happen at the National Tele Center here tonight is that the elections office will start giving us confirmed results. That means that we won't receive any more provisional results. The elections office will start physically processing the ballot boxes that are arriving from the different polling stations and we'll have a board a board that will be set up here with all the 248 candidates the names will be on the board and the the number of votes from each polling station will will be allocated to the different uh, to the 248 candidates Jackie thank you so much for that update Christopher all the political parties except Fiji First are calling on the count to be suspended, claiming there is evidence of vote rigging. The Social Democratic Liberal Party, the Fiji Labour Party, the People's Democratic Party and One Fiji issued a statement this afternoon. It says they will not accept the outcome of the election because of evidence of coordinated and systematic electoral fraud. They want the Minister for Elections, the Supervisor of Elections and the Electoral Commission to suspend all counting of pre-poll ballots and postal ballots as well as cease the verification of provisional results. The parties claim there's been tampering of ballot boxes, ballot boxes have been removed from polling stations without being counted and large size files have been placed in ballot boxes by opening the seals. Is this being something? done because you don't want to accept defeat? Not at all. What do you make of the multi-national um, observer group saying they've, they've seen no irregularities whatsoever? Well, that's their, that's their opinion and that's their statement. They are observing the, uh, the processes and we have people on the ground as well and they have identified these. And in uh, a lot of incidents where this occurs, 
the actual observers may not necessarily be there at the time because uh, there's not enough of them. Have you been in conversation with the observer group? Have you like no, we have <laughs> just concluded the uh, preparation of the statement and we've come here because we had indicated to you at the uh, the meeting site that we would come in and issue the statement. So we're being here now to try and give you that information and uh, from if there's any other questions you can direct it to the Is there any thought leaders. at all that the observer group is, is uh, incompetent? Is that what you're suggesting? We haven't said any such thing. That's that's your interpretation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or oh, there are a number. Uh, we just use three as an example to make the point. And some of them are, are extremely serious. Yes. What do you expect the, uh, the response from the elections and the electoral office I would imagine your guess is going to be as good as ours. What would you do if they don't uh, accept any of your claims and they continue as they are? Well, we've made the statement and we're producing the evidence. So whether they do something about it or don't uh, is, is not for us to judge. They're in charge of the process, so it's up to them. But the Mumu, uh, following this, will you accept the decision of the Supervisor of Elections and the Electoral Commission following the statement you've issued? We're going to show evidence tomorrow and wait for them to work on our, um, on our concerns. Have you contemplated taking uh, legal action, uh, seeking injunctions to stop this? I think we'll try all means, but you know with the, with the decrees that they have in place, it's going to be very, very difficult Will you boycott for us parliament? to be heard. Will you boycott parliament? I think we're just at this point at this time. Thank you. Is this being done because Sadilpa doesn't want to accept defeat? We have always said that we will accept free and fair elections. And I think I've also already told you that. And uh, we will accept it if it's free and fair. But some of these irregularities that have been um, free and others that we have will bring that to their attention. Do you think those irregularities are significant enough to have changed the will of the people? Do you think they're sufficient enough to change that number of votes? That could be the, uh, that could be the picture that we are getting. That significant? Uh, I think so. We're talking about 60% of votes being secured by Fiji First. If that were all to be rigged, obviously it would have been picked up by MOG. It's impossible to mi mix. Uh, miss are you speaking 60%. for uh, Fiji First or are you asking a question? I'm posing questions to you, sir. No, 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 yeah, now you're, you're making, making a statement, decision. you're not posing a question. I'm saying it would be no, difficult no. for MOG to habit, miss. Right? It would be difficult you're for MOG identified as a Fiji First journalist. votes being rigged. It would the be votes, this is what we are going to show, how the votes have been rigged. Now, you explain to me, why has the count been suspended? The count under the decree is supposed to be continuous. Why has it been suspended and why is it resuming at 4.30? Why? So that ballot boxes can be stuffed? Why has it been suspended? It shouldn't be suspended. Have your party agents been uh, present all throughout? I'm talking about suspending the count. I'm not talking about po a party polling agents being there. Can you clarify? Right? Have your you ask the supervisor why has he suspended the count Were your when it is supposed to be continuous. Mr. Have you read the decree? I'm just asking well, I'm telling you, you read the decree. Under that, the count is supposed to be continuous. So, were your right? party, pre party agents present all throughout? Did any it does not matter. That is agents, not the question. That's our not party the issue. agents have been there throughout yes, the whole process. Uh, not only our party. <clears throat> but also the other parties, so that when we had that meeting today, we found, this morning, we found that we had many common issues that we thought was uh, just our party experiencing it, but then we found out that other parties were also uh, experiencing those difficulties. Meanwhile, the International Observer Group gave the election proceedings a clean bill of health this afternoon. Despite the protest and accusations of electoral fraud by political parties, the multinational observer group says the outcome of the Fijian election is on track and broadly represents the will of Fijian voters. Co-leader of the MOG Australian Peter Reith says conditions were in place for Fijians to exercise their right to vote freely. Maggie Boyle has the details. The 2014 Fijian election, the first election since 2006, was enthusiastically embraced by the voters of Fiji, who were keen to participate in the democratic process. The election was conducted in an atmosphere of calm, with an absence of electoral misconduct or evident intimidation. In Fiji since mid-August, the multinational observer group this afternoon calling the Fiji elections, in a nutshell, free and fair. Most people are going to say, look, Fiji's taken a, a big step an important step and certainly a step which you know it was really you know really quite you know very strong wherever we went you know Fijian people were really pleased that this was happening they weren't saying it's going to be 
you know, perfect as they might want it to be in the future, but they saw it as a really important step for them. And Asked about claims of election rigging, the MOG says these allegations remain unsubstantiated. We've been aware of uh, 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 rumours such as those for quite some time now, and we've gone to quite some lengths to try and validate them. Uh, we've received um, a number of expressions of concern that uh, when we examined them closely, uh, we were unable to validate. Uh, I made this statement, um, I think about a week and a half ago, that uh, we have not seen any instances of fraud or, uh, or any deliberate um, uh, misconduct. And we were looking for those. National Observer Group, which comprised 92 members from 13 different countries, have concluded so far that the elections in Fiji are on track to broadly represent the will of the Fijian voters. Mog goes on to say the conditions were in place for Fijians to exercise their right to vote freely. Maggie Boyle, FBC News. Minister for Elections Ayah Said Kayyum has questioned the move by some political parties to challenge the election process, including counting. But it is very interesting that they are now making these types of claims after the results are now coming out where it would indicate that Fiji First is going to win government. Uh, they had all the time yesterday. If they found there were any anomalies, they should have made those concerns note, you know, brought to the attention of the election officials almost immediately. Uh, there were observer groups uh, throughout Fiji. And indeed, if you look at the, the percentage of polling stations that were actually observed, by the, um, the multinational observer group is about 33 percent. Now that is very, very high if you look at international standards. You're generally looking at, you know, percentage about 15 percent or so. Uh, but Fiji is very high. In fact, you should, you should talk to the multinational observer group because they'll tell you it's probably one of the highest ever. Uh, so they had all that opportunity to raise it with them. They had all the opportunity to raise it with the uh, elections officials. And now when the results have become somewhat decisive, they are suddenly bringing up these issues. I see that it's been signed again by someone like Linda Tambuya, who was, I saw on television uh, saying uh, this morning that you know, she thought the process was really good and that she's looking forward to the next elections and everything went smoothly and now suddenly the tune has changed. The Supervisor of Elections has confirmed he is yet to receive any formal written complaint from political parties who are alleging electoral fraud. Mohamed Sanim says the parties need to follow procedures if they have any issues with the counting process, added he will discount any unofficial comments made to the media. As you would have seen from the, from the statement itself, um, these are very general issues. Uh, they, there needs to be exact particulars submitted to the uh, Fijian Elections Office in order for us to consider. I, at, as at now, I haven't received anything formal from any party. Uh, as you'd know, the process during counting is for uh, agents to complain in writing to the supervisor if they're not satisfied with the counting uh, officer's uh, decisions. And uh, so far only one decision was communicated and that has been dealt with. And for your information, that was from the Fiji First. And uh, that party is not in the list of parties in this. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, as it now, uh, based on informal re uh, reports from the media, for the elections office, counting will not stop. Counting has not stopped. Counting had continued uh, since last night. On a, it will continue as scheduled on a 24-hour basis until all the three poll has been counted. If there are any issues that any party has, has, they should first raise it with the supervisor of elections. And this is something that we have been saying from the beginning. Since nobody has raised it with us, I will not give regard to any statements made to the media. Sunim has also clarified that counting never stopped. There was some uh, misinformed uh, information put out that counting had stopped. Uh, I can confirm that counting never stopped. Um, uh, of course, if there is a team that has just finished, they might go for a break before they come back and start the next ballot box. But counting has been happening continuously. There has been teams, supervisors and party agents also working around the clock at the counting centre. And I was also around until early in the morning. And I can assure you that counting was continuing when I left. And in the daytime when the deputy supervisor was in charge, counting has been continuing. So um, uh, there is misinformation uh, and uh, 
I think um, I just listened to one of the stations before I came to this side. They had also said that counting has resumed. I wish to clarify, counting never stopped and counting has continued from yesterday. So uh, to all the members of the public uh, who have been made anxious after this news, I can confirm to you that uh, it was just a misinformation and the Fijian Elections Office never stopped counting. Meanwhile, the supervisor has also welcomed the statement by the multinational observer group who emphatically stated that the election was free and fair. We'll take a short break and return with more coverage of the 2014 election. All the polling venues will be polling and our focus is to win the election. Win them to just the right uh, candidate. Especially this time when there's an election. The FPC 2014 election special. You are number one with us. The FPC 2014 election special. You are number one with us. Welcome back to our special bulletin of the 2014 general election. Although the Fiji First Party has taken a commanding lead in the provisional results, General Secretary Ayasad Kayum is downplaying the huge lead they have ahead of their rivals, the Social Democratic Liberal Party. Said Kayum says they will wait for the final count. It's still a bit too early to call it. Um, you know, we obviously want to be 100% uh, sure uh, before the elections are called, so to speak. Uh, we believe there's uh, probably another about 100,000 or 110,000 votes out there still to be counted, to be included even in the provisional list. So I think once we hit, uh, you know, based on the trends that we have with the voter turnout of, say, 75%, uh, once we have a total number of votes up to about 520,000, 526,000, then it's something that can be called and obviously they'll be called by our leader. Speaking on the number of Baini Marama has compared to his closest rival Sadelpa leader Rote Mumukepa, Said Kayum says it is an indication of the confidence the people have with the Prime Minister. I think it is indicative of the fact that he's seen truly as a national leader, a leader as a vision, but more so I think also the fact that he's a leader who's seen as a leader for everybody. Uh, and that is his appeal, he's a very compassionate, uh, affectionate person who's also got a long-term vision for Fiji. And the fact that uh, under his leadership, Fiji has unprecedented development. As of 1 p.m. today, votes from 1,281 centres see Fiji first still leading the count by 239,261 votes, translating into 60.10% of total votes counted so far, with Sadelpa at 106,406 votes, standing at 26.7% of total votes counted so far. Australia's Foreign Minister Julie Bishop says they are ready to work with whoever wins the election in Fiji. Sky News reports Bishop says Australia will work closely with them to continue to normalise relations. However, she says there is a long way to go before Australia can fully restore ties with Fiji, saying democracy is more than just holding an election. She says there is a great deal up for Australia to achieve, but the first step is to ensure that the election meets international expectations. Bishop says there is quite a menu of matters that needs to be addressed before Fiji would be fully embraced by Australia. The European Union has welcomed the peaceful conduct of the Fijian election and the high turnout for voting. In a statement, the EU says there was a lot of enthusiasm among the young people, many of whom were voting for the first time. The statement also says that the election authorities should administer the election process in full transparency until its completion. It says the European Union is committed to working closely with the elected government to support the consolidation of democracy in the country. As the counting progressed last night, this was how some of the people in Suva and Nausori kept themselves entertained as they followed the results. Oh, <laughs> 
FBC News visited seven polling stations in Lombasa last night. Security presence was tight at the counting centres at All Saints Secondary School, Holy Family Secondary School, Lombasa College, Nalemba College, Law Primary School, St. Augustine Primary School and Lombasa Sangam Primary School. Counting started a little after 7pm yesterday. Election officials verified the votes in the presence of the police officers and political party representatives. And we'll take a short break and return with more coverage of the 2014 election. All the polling venues will be polling and our focus is to win the election on time. Bring them to just the right uh, candidate. Especially this time when there's an election. The FPC 2014 election special. You are number one with us. Mmm, Bollywood hero Panti Re. शामिल हो जाए हमारे साथ मंडे टू फ्राइडे सिक्स ए एम टू नाइन ए एम मिर्ची एफ एम एट हार्ट The FPC 2014 election special. You are number one with us. Welcome back to our special bulletin of the 2014 general elections. The Fiji police force and the Fiji military forces have been working together since last night to maintain security throughout the country until the first sitting of parliament. Police Chief of Operations A.C. Pirusiate Tundravu says the police have successfully provided a conducive environment for the elections office, the media and the government to conduct the elections. Rashika Kumar has the details. There were no major reports of criminal activities during the polling and counting period so far. Part of this success has been the result of joint monitoring by police and the army. The military are always uh, there. We face any assistance from the police, they are there. So consultation is an ongoing issue on our personal issues. Tunjavu says the police force wants to ensure the safety and security of the general public post-elections. He says, though, there were some minor reports received at some stations. Members of the public will continue to expect uh, flooding of uh, uh, police officers uh, in some of the areas. Our task force team that uh, we have redeployed to the west, east and north for the elections will be there for a few more days and then we'll uh, recall them. Um, and uh, we still have our standby response unit that are uh, there at the various divisions. Tunjabu briefed the Commissioner of Police today about the operation. The police is urging the public to maintain law and order as the election period has yet to end. Rashka Kumar, FPC News. Parents are being urged to send their children to school and the Fiji police force says there are enough officers on duty to ensure the safety of children and the general public during this election period. Savara Tamboa has more. Despite classes resuming normally today after yesterday's public holiday for the election, some students stayed home. I've heard that after the election, if a shuttle power Fiji first won, then something will happen. 
That's why I'm not going to school today. I was prepared to go to school this morning, but I came back after listening to rumors. I heard that a coup will take place today. Police have also reassured that the safety of everyone is paramount. We don't have to live in fear. I would encourage uh, students, uh, parents, um, to let their students attend uh, uh, school as usual. Police officers were out in numbers today. We have sent a few patrols this morning to some of the schools just to verify the information that we have received. And uh, I would urge or like um, uh, request uh, teachers, uh, parents, should they have any information of people sending out uh, rumors like this, if you can just advise us so that uh, the police are patrol teams are around uh, just to verify all these things. Acting PS for Education, Basundra Kumar says all schools open today. Annual examinations will be conducted soon, so time for us is very important and we do not want any loss in teaching time. So it, all the schools will remain open and they will operate normal for teaching and learning business. Some schools were used as polling and counting centers for the general election. Sabaira Tambua, FBC News. Fiji Airways is looking forward to growing the number of inbound passengers now that the general election is almost over. Akasita Thale reports. The national airline carrier has welcomed the completion of the much-awaited election. Fiji Airways is adamant it can now focus on increasing tourism numbers. Now for us as a business, this kind of election, and that's the same on the world stage, always have... Uh, some downside before the election because demand just slows down because people don't love uncertainty so people uh, tend to not book or postpone their trip. Pishla says their hopeful business will soon pick up pace with the announcement of a new government. Four, five, six weeks into these uh, elections or before the elections business slows down uh, and then as you see in the worldwide stage after the election, <coughs> the pent-up demand just uh, unfolds itself and uh, the markets bounce back. So now we hopefully, after the election, so back into business. Fiji Airways also revealed that during elections campaign, the airline industry has always been one of the most popular subjects for public discussions. Some proposals have varied from extending the runway at Lambasa Airport, compete with domestic routes and reverting back to Boeing 777 flights compared to having A330. He says most were made out of the heat of elections. Is if government change, then we have to go through an education process because we have to educate new politicians about the nature of our business, about the nature of tourism, the to-dos, the better to avoid, and we have to make sure that those politicians are able to make smart calls and able to make smart judgments. The airline says it will focus more on competing with overseas markets, tourists and setting an international standard. Akusita Tale, FBC News. And FBC News took to the streets today to ask the public their views on the provisional results released so far. This is what they had to say. I am confident Fiji First will take almost 100% of the votes. We have uh, supported uh, Fiji First and we hope that they will make a government and look after us very well. This is one village that strongly supports Fiji First. They will continue to take the lead in the counting of votes. It's been clear from the start. Banyamarama will win for what he has done for us Fijians. I think the, the Fiji First Party will uh, be able to dominate the uh, the election this year. And that brings us to the end of our special bulletin for the 2014 general elections. Meanwhile, you can send us newsworthy pictures and videos of the elections on email citizenseyes at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via Facebook page, FBC News. And if you're on Twitter, follow and tweet us your news tips at FBC News or simply hashtag FBC News. You can join us again at 6 p.m. tomorrow with our major news bulletin. Till then, good night. All the polling venues will be polling and our focus is to win the election on time. Win them to just the right uh, candidate. Especially this time when there's an election. The FPC 2014 election special. You are number one with us. <laughs>